Hey, hey, good morning. It's new, and I've decided to come back online streaming after a couple days off. This is kind of the major lull of the league. Twitch is basically dead, as far as Path of Exile is concerned. You know, I'm still enjoying playing the game, and my community is still very much alive, doing a whole bunch of God Touch farming, some Divination card farming. I thought a good idea would be exploring the possibility of combining the two. This is something I've had in the back of my mind for quite a while, and... You know, God Touch farming may be going core, obviously, Divination card farming with Strongbox Quant, Enraged Strongbox is presumably going to remain core. This is definitely something on my mind as far as the future, potentially one of the greatest farms uh, that might exist as far as currency earning potential. Uh, it's been a very tricky thing to explore. I've basically spent the entire weekend off stream exploring this, trying a variety of things, and I want to share what I've landed on. Uh, it's kind of extreme. <laughs> it's definitely uh, not, not one where I'm scaling back the juice or scaling uh, back the headache for prepping materials. This is one of the most... Mm, troublesome preps I've ever had to do for 100 maps and you know I usually don't count the prep time specifically in there but I do count the prep cost so we're gonna go through all that all the cost uh, let's see I usually start with the Atlas passive tree which is wandering path style you know wandering path is the definitive winner when it comes to divination cart farming with strong boxes in my opinion and it does also seem to be, I think I can, I'm, I'm pretty well ready to say it is better for God Touch Farming too. But there is a major caveat there and that caveat is uh, you need to have a character that's basically so strong that, uh, for example, you know, going a gloom, gloom Shrine with Shrines is not going to be all that impactful. Uh, for your character in terms of speed, clearing, efficiency. So if you have a character that's so strong that it can kind of equally perform as well as a gloom shrine can when you have on that character then i guess go ahead go for it uh survivability has to be very high of course um and to be able to want run eight mod corrupted maps wandering path with essentially any combination of modifiers uh, is extraordinarily demanding and it's especially that is quite precarious with this farm that we're about to do which i'm about to reveal to you how i had to roll the maps was particularly <laughs> rough but anyway uh we have abyss going on here going to be doing all in abyss you'll see that it's kind of interesting all of the points i've taken are basically just trying to increase the spawn chance of abyss legion uh you know all the all the uh relevant strong box you know getting one free shrine on the map uh beyond is there a little bit in beast here i'm actually gonna for the first time this league i'm going to be using my einar uh master missions and i just have a few points in here i couldn't really spare any it doesn't make a whole lot of sense uh, since i don't have a ton of red beast on the map anyway uh to run the points up here or there uh i am going to be running torment here because the way i'm clearing the maps is quite uh, specific and it does actually offer an opportunity for tormented spirits to do uh, their thing which is not usually the case uh, yeah singular focus not really mandatory but I'm gonna be running it there expedition chance of course is all in there so yeah basically legion chance abyss chance expedition chance uh, and even harbinger chance a little bit here because harbingers are still do okay with spawning divination cards but of course for divination card farming is primarily all about strong boxes and then the eight mod corrupted maps with increased effect of uh, quantity of uh, quantity and rarity increased effect of modifiers non-unique maps that is the way you maximize uh, the divination cards coming out onto the map and then with god touch farming you know legion is usually the number one way but uh, we're going to be running defile cathedral here legion's not that great on defile cathedral i did a lot of testing on crimson temple versus defile cathedral and man i really don't like defile cathedral's layout for delhi mirrors ever and I, I kept finding myself in a situation where i had to choose between delirium mirrors and beyond because i couldn't really do you know an abyss sextant and i guess i have to run two strong box sections so the sextants are extremely tight on the options there so it's kind of problematic but um yeah let's get into it here uh we're going to be doing winged ambush winged reliquary and winged divination those are the three mandatory now the fourth one you know you could do legion here you could do abyss here 
if you're going to do winged stuff, then Abyss is pretty obviously uh, the best choice if you're going to go all in Abyss. If you do winged Abyss, you kind of feel like you have to run the Abyss section to maximize uh, the usage out of there. And it gets really it gets really kind of sad that you know we have a choice between two Abyss versus Ambush here. Uh, we cannot do fortune favors to brave anything like that because it's a wandering path strategy. I'm going to run Ambush though because I'm going to be even be running 600% uh, quantity. Strong boxes, which is the most expensive sextant that I'll be running here. But yeah, these are the scarabs here. And then for the sextant, it'll be plus two abyss, which is clocks in, at least for me, so long as not everyone's trying to buy these all at once. This is around three divine orbs per sextant there. Uh, the strong box, 600% quantum modifier, not really necessary. You could run 500%, but, you know, I was so close to going all the way all in anyway. I figured I'll just go ahead and do it. Uh, it, yeah, it's five divines. <laughs> Four, five divines for this section. Really not sure if that's worth it, but I'm going to go ahead and run it. Uh, one divine for a plus three strong boxes. Corrupt and rare. I think that's definitely a fair price uh, for this one uh, if you're, you know, using a winged divination scarab. And then, you know, another one that's not really that impactful. The difference between 25% increase versus 35% increase pack size for beyond. Uh, you know, that is something, but uh, again, the beyond boss tends to spawn kind of early anyway however i do have a strategy clearing strategy in mind to help make that not happen so much which i hope you pay attention for uh but the elevated beyond is three divines so there's three divines five divines one divine three divines and that's where a large portion of this mass of divine orbs came from because that's a lot of sections that i'm having to run here and then also uh there was you know something like three divines per scarab column that had to be added uh, in order to make up for some of the bulk pricing differences scarabs are at this point over 50 chaos per i think they're selling at a rate of somewhere around mm, five scarabs per two divines something like that so that's kind of the rate you're looking at getting them it you know and and they're they may dry up even more potentially so i did have to buy a lot of scarabs and it definitely was expensive and then the maps. So here's what you probably didn't expect. So <laughs> I gave a sneak preview to my chat. I didn't actually reveal what maps it was, but they could see there were delirium uh, maps. Presumably, if you saw this in the in the uh, dump tab, you would think this that I'm running some kind of scarab, deli orb, you know, 80, 60, 80 percent scarab strategy. But here we are. Oh, uh, almost missed this cane here with a three month subscription. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, back to this. You know, this is where the testing came in handy. I did a lot of testing. I did a lot of kind of racking my head around what I wanted to do. I just couldn't stomach the thought of not running 8 mod corrupted. There was only one scenario where I could even hold a candle to that in terms of juicing up the map, getting the drop. And that was if uh, I had increased number of rare monsters, 6 modded corrupted into unidentified and ran the un unidentified pack size section that was the only type of map that could even hold a candle to this kind of map uh but i really 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 want to put delirium on there because if you don't have delirium in the map you're missing a huge number of altars that naturally spawn as a result of additional eldritch minions spawning in some of the gaps in the map between where you know some monsters are laid out uh yeah so I feel like I have to have a Delirium on there. For a minute there, I was testing this strategy without Delhi Orb, but with the Delhi Mirror instead of Beyond. Of course, that kind of that gets kind of ruined by the terrible layout on Defile Cathedral. Uh, Defile Cathedral has uh, is much better for Abyss than Crimson Temple. Crimson Temple and Abyss is just <laughs> abysmal, we'll say. Um, yeah, and then Legion is not very good on either one. So you know, these are the two kind of best maps for Apothecary farming and. To be fair, this would be a perfectly suitable strategy to do on Colonnade. I think if you wanted to do, if you really wanted to do this with Legion instead of Abyss, uh, I think that would be viable, and you'd want to do it on Colonnade for sure. Uh, but if you're gonna try and you know go for the gold and hit the Apothecary, which is still at like 70 divines a piece, I got one right here. I, I have found a couple Apothecaries in my testing. Yep, they're riding at 70 divines. Um, yeah, if you want to have a chance at that card, you got to run either Defile Cathedral or Crimson Temple. And uh, as far as God Touch farming, 
you know, God Touch and Strong Box don't go together very well. The Strong Boxes can spawn some rare monsters, but it's pretty rare. And they tend to have very low number of Arch Nemesis mods. Delirium Monsters also tend to have very low number of Arch Nemesis mods. Uh, Beyond Monsters tend not to drop Divination cards very well, but they can do the God Touch thing fairly well. Same story with Abyss. Abyss can kind of do both, though. You know, Abyss is kind of nice if you juice it up maximum. You can get some Divination cards from it. Uh, and certainly God Touch is pretty good there. So I do like Abyss for this farm, but of course I don't like Abyss, generally speaking, because of how tedious it is. So, I mean, there's just a lot of hair being pulled one way or another on this strategy, but this is what I landed on. Every single one of these maps is 8 mod corrupted with 20% Delirious. I did go ahead and change the Scarabs. I mean, the um, Delirium Orbs over to something that was viable. Uh, let's see, I, I worked with either Foreboding, Fossilized, uh... The currency one, the uniques one, and the catalyst ones. Those are the those are all ones that at least can drop something useful. In my opinion, uh, I did I did not put try to put like scarabs or or um, I think there's like one map in here with divination, uh, perhaps. But anyway, uh, I'm throwing a lot of maps away. By the way, because you know if I corrupt the map and it turns out to be trashy, I'm not even going to run it. There, there is a scenario you could run it, and I do actually want to show you that right now before we get started. Uh, there's basically two separate ways I was rolling these maps that worked out for me. One is to kind of mass roll them into a high quality rare uh, that you would typically run uncorrupted, and then to you can you can there's a less uh, risky ver version of corrupting maps than Val orbs, and that is to corrupt double corrupt a map here. So I might, you know, roll the maps like this. I did this with a few of the maps. So this is, you know, this is a ma nice six modded map. It has uh, increased number of rare monsters. Double corrupting a map, I do believe it cannot double corrupt the same outcome both times. Uh, but, you know, if you put this in here like this, it definitely increases the chance of it coming out eight mod corrupted. It may come out un unidentified. The funny thing about this map is it might, this might be the holy grail map here because this might be eight mod corrupted and unidentified. So technically the best map you could ever get would be acquired this way. Although this might also be bricked into unidentified. So it might be trashy rolls unidentified. I don't know. Uh, of course, I will probably run this map because there's a good chance that it's either clean unidentified, the same rolls it had, or it's now eight mod unidentified. And that's kind of exciting to run that. So I'm not gonna run any map like that in, uh, this time around. But here's a second map. We're just kind of showing you some of the outcomes on here. These beasts are cheap. It's only like 15 chaos per beast, which is good. Uh, yeah, so the same thing happened here. And then sometimes, you know, you might end up with a map like this. So, you know, when I was rolling the maps, generally speaking, on super rare occasion, I'd hit some insanely high pack size uncorrupted map. Honestly, I don't even need to corrupt this, really. I mean, 36% pack size is actually in the threshold of um, 8 mod corrupts numbers. It's kind of on the low end, but it's still viable. But anyway, I'm going to double corrupt this anyway. Just so you can kind of see one more time what sort of outcome we get here. And okay, there we go. So that one did go up. So you see, I mean, I got three good outcomes, presumably. Three good outcomes out of that. So that's nice, right? Now you notice that, uh, or you won't be able to notice actually. So when it goes 8 mod corrupted, it loses the increased num number of rare monsters. So... You know, there's basically three possible outcomes if you do decide to take care in how you roll the maps. Uh, it's either going to brick completely, which means it becomes trash, and I actually throw it away. Even though I pre-orbed it with a deli orb, I still throw it in the trash can at that point. Uh, one, That's one result. Another result is it turns unidentified, which means it's good. I can run it with the unidentified sexton if it's a six mod corrupted increased number of rare monsters map. That's still a quality map for sure. With um, And it's corrupted with delirium on it. I mean, that's a very, very good map. Uh, and then the other option is that nothing happens. So then it's the exact same thing as if I never corrupted it in the first place. Just running it un uncorrupted. So, you know, that still has certainly uh, some potential there. And then the fourth option is that it just completely obliterates all the mods. Goes eight mod corrupted. Eight fresh new mods. You don't know what those mods are. They could be terrifying mods. Uh, they could be easy mods. You don't know. Uh, but that is, of course, the desired result. Because that is going to produce the juiciest maps of all. 
Somebody in the chat asked, uh, is pack size more important than map quant? Yeah, yeah, it is for this farm, actually. Uh, pack size is hugely important for this farm because uh, pack size... I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a single scenario by which pack size isn't more important except for maybe harvest and expedition farming, possibly. Uh, but for strongbox, enraged, sextant farming, pack size is king there. Most of the monsters spawn are going to be white anyway, and you're just kind of driving up the quantity multiplier on all of those monsters, so you want to be able to spawn as many as, as possible. That's why even uh, small nodes like this are extremely valuable. Being guarded by an extra pack of monsters is really good. And then, you know, you're increasing the pack size. So tons and tons of monsters spawn uh, from the strong bosses. Incidentally, Defile Cathedral is better than Crimson Temple for strong box because Crimson Temple sometimes has some very tight corridors where the strong box is placed in a tiny little room and it cannot spawn properly and you actually lose a lot of value there. So Defile Cathedral does have a one-up on Crimson Temple on that note. Of course, uh, Crimson Temple is way better map than Defile Cathedral when it comes to uh, clearing out the boss ASAP to get higher quality altars. Um, Defile Cathedral is quite tough when it comes to uh, how you want to go about clearing the map to try to get the most out of it. And we're going to get into that on the first full map clear. But uh, now it's time for me to take you to... Let me see here. Oh, right. Let's see. Oop. All right, there we go. All right, uh, okay. That That's a number right there. 249 divine orbs worth of value is the investment cost. <laughs> it's even higher than last time. Yeah, so I had to put 129 raw divine orbs to cover the cost of um, the sextons, to cover the bulk pricing on the scarabs, and then I budgeted 50 chaos per map for this. So this is kind of, this is basically what happened. You know, either I was rolling them into high quality rare and then double corrupting them with beast crafting, which is uh, like 15 chaos per beast is also the cost of having to re-roll a lot of maps to do that or i was just chisel alk and you know orb and val regardless and just only keeping the ones that spawned eight mod corrupted honestly that's how, how most of these maps came into play which means at least one out of four times it's going to be trash so i'm not really rolling the map but that's where i get the kind of cost of around um 50 chaos because deli orbs around 10 11 12 maybe 13 chaos a piece uh, and then rolling them is very, very cheap uh, if you're not getting the ones you want. Again, not using any Scarab or Rolling them are, is essentially free anyway because I rolled a lot of them into d Diviners and uh, Skittering anyway. And I'm not using them. I can save them for something else or save them uh, to sell. So I don't really think there's any cost actually in rolling the uh, Deli Orbs and then using sort of the mid-tier and then keeping the high tier. So that's it. That is the start of the video. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get into this. It's gonna be it's gonna be a juicy one exile and I'm gonna be hearing Einar a lot this Today as well. Fortunately, uh, I do have over a hundred Einar missions and that's gonna be quite all right Here we go First map of course, I always put in one of the nicer maps here. This is an eight mod corrupted increased number of rare maps I mean, you know the, the Basically a perfect map. It does have one awful, awful mod on there. One of the worst mods of all players. Have 60% reduced effect of non-cursed ores from skills. That is super punishing. It means uh, sometimes I'm going to get killed you know, in the map. Far more likely uh, than not. I do not like 96% reduced effect of recovery as well. That's a particularly bad one. And if I have a map with both of those mods at the same time, it does have a pot potential to be bricked. Uh, but I don't think any of the maps I have... Uh, are like that. There definitely is a chance to brick the maps here, but actually, in all honesty, these maps are easier to run than, like, Wandering Path, Delhi, 8 mod Corrupted Maps, Delhi Mirror. Because uh, the Delhi Mirror, you know, there's a timer on there, and then you go deeper into the mirror, it gets harder. This is just 20% del delirious. It's not super serious. Um, but yeah, strong boxes are surprisingly dangerous, though. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we're going to pick Ambush on there. I do think four additional strong boxes is going to be more valuable than two additional Abyss. I do, especially since uh, the Abyss take more time, obviously. So yeah, this is Delhi Orbed, eight mod corrupted maps. Uh, this is super high expense. Uh, actually, I didn't even calculate how much this is per map. 
I guess it's two point yeah, it's two point five divines per map. Investment cost. That's pretty high. I mean that that is approaching the territory of what people were doing, you know, with Nemesis 3 farming and stuff back in the day. So uh th this particular strategy, I should say before we even start, not guaranteed to make money. <laughs> You know, I never, I typically never do a strategy that I think there's any chance whatsoever that I'm not going to make at least halfway decent currency on. This is one I think there's a chance I might not make decent currency on. In fact, I think it is possible that I come out uh, negative if I don't find a single apothecary. In my opinion, I should find probably two apothecaries and 100 maps with this uh, strategy. I have been paying attention to uh, some other people who've been farming Devout Cathedral, like literally all league have found like dozens of apothecaries and, and I've been keeping track of what they're doing and how often they're finding them. I should find one in roughly every 40, 50 to 60 maps uh, with this strategy, I think. And that's actually how often I have been finding them. Um, no, actually, I'm, I'm a bit ahead because I haven't done 100 maps and I've found two already uh, testing a variety of things. So yeah, I'm pretty confident uh, we're going to we're going to come out all right. Of course, you know, getting that jackpot 20, 30 divine um, arch nem monster that comes out of the abyss is also another juicy thing. So the abyss is targeting primarily the god touch and the strong box targeting the divination card. There is a tiny bit of crossover there, but not huge. Here we go. Map number one. I'm ready for it. Exciting. And the timer will be on. These maps take something like seven to eight minutes. Seven, six, seven, or eight minutes to complete. I'm not 100% sure. So, important to note how I clear this map. I do try to kill these weak deli rares if I can. Like, there was one there. I already got hasted. That's good. I'm trying to keep my rampage up. You're going to notice that uh, I'm not really focusing on trying to clear anything. In fact, I'm trying really hard not to unlock the deli or the, uh, the beyond boss. It's something I'm really trying hard to do here. I find it to be super important. Uh, I know I now know the layout of the map boss. It's pretty easy to tell where he's at. I usually lose my rampage in here, but didn't this time somehow. Okay, so I'm still going to run around the map. The boss is dead. The altars are going to be higher, more premium now. I can feel a little bit better about clearing stuff. Still going to be taking the altars. The altars have an even higher chance of being valuable now because I, want, I got currency and divination as a potential there. Uh, the Beyond Boss spawned early, that's unfortunate. I think a lot of my success is going to be riding on forcing that Beyond Boss to spawn late, and I do have a particular strategy on that. I'm going to kind of continue running this map the same way I would have otherwise. You kind of notice that I'm not killing. I'm not kind of like full clearing anything, I'm just kind of like punch and go. And then I don't really focus on trying to fully clear all the Beyond Monsters because that would be spawning uh, the Beyond Boss more likely. I run this, this is something I call, I guess you could call it the Defiled Cathedral Circuit. Uh, first time run through is to try and just kind of get around it through once, maybe spawn a couple altars, uh, get the boss obviously was an important part. Uh, round two is going to be all about uh, more full clearing and getting an opening each strong box, but not necessarily killing all the Beyond Monsters that would spawn from the strong box again, if the Beyond Boss still had not spawned at this point. Um, it's important to, to actually try and, I think, it's important to try and manipulate beyond so that the boss doesn't spawn as likely. The boss spawns whenever you kill a particular uh, minion that spawns from there. They spawn occasionally, and you'll notice that that's why the beyond boss can spawn early, can spawn late. It's just kind of RNG random whenever that, that minion, maybe it's called apparition or something, the minion spawns and then you know you kill it and spawns the boss uh, but if you're kind of and, and the minion typically has a little more health so if you're kind of clearing through and you're not like fully clearing everything you're not just blowing up all the beyond packs while you're clearing if you kind of leave them up purposefully uh, you can really increase your chances of uh, delaying the beyond boss spawn which results in way more beyond monsters being spawned which results in a lot more beyond rare monsters being spawned and as we all know uh, beyond rare monsters can be quite juicy on the god touch side of things at least um, because my last video I had that moment where I almost got I almost got my map bricked by a Shikari touched beyond monster that ultimately dropped 20 divine orbs I think it was uh, while I was trying to pick up scarabs off of a different one 
So I've ran through twice. I've opened up all the strong boxes, I think. Uh, done the little side areas there. Um, now my focus is to fully clear the strong box areas, because quite often some of them, you know, they open up twice, or they don't really fully clear everything. Uh, and then, of course, to do the abysses. The abysses are, are the big thing now. So when I do the abysses, I'm basically going to have maximum altar power. You know, I, I did hit a lot of nice altars here. I got a lot of double currency. Uh, this would be a great map to spawn a, a, a currency god touched on because I got I got something like 40% chance to duplicate currency. Uh, I have a really nice uh, multiplier on the map right now for multiple altars. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I see a couple of people coming in the chat. I did actually want to comment on, on uh, this a little bit. So, one reason I'm doing this, you know, I'm just kind of trying to entertain people during this kind of lull period. Uh, I'm still having fun doing stuff. I, I don't care that much about farming up currency for any one particular thing now. Uh, for me, it's just more like exploring uh, potential strategies, you know, for the future. Which, you know, things will probably be adjusted in terms of how God Touch works and all. But uh, at least, you know, we can kind of see... Or, start wrapping our heads around some of the higher end juicing stuff for next league and then of course just pure entertainment always nice to entertain you guys with something <laughs> while you're waiting for the uh, new league events to start on that note uh, mayhem is coming out here in a few days I don't really plan to run it I, I do think I'll run delirium everywhere I like that event uh, last time even though most people didn't like it uh, it'll be uh, much more forgiving this time I guess so That'll be a great place to test out uh, what I want to league start next league with. Which will be some kind of toxic rain champion, I think. Nothing too crazy on the meta breaking there, but... Yeah. So it looks like probably going to walk out of this map with way less money than it costs to get in. And that's going to be the story of most maps. You know, most maps I'm not even going to make my currency back. Uh, but you, as you can tell, you know, if one of these rares comes out, currency touch, that's going to be a huge payday. And there's a lot of abysses on each map. I'm actually a little bit surprised. I haven't really come close to dying on this map. Uh, this is a dangerous map. It's got minus aura effect. But it doesn't seem to be affecting me too much. Uh, the Innocent is one of the lesser cards I can drop here. I did. Oh, yeah, I did get an Enlightened earlier. I forgot about that. Uh, so that will help pay a little bit of the cost. It'll be interesting to see how many Enlightens, uh, Seven Years Bad Luck, and all that I get. Okay, those are a couple of the lesser cards. They, those are like two or three Chaos apiece cards. Not that important. So the third round, I do go ahead and loot everything. And, you know, I'm done with this in less than seven minutes. So that feels pretty good. If I if I get through the map clean, I even have temporal chains on me, which is affecting me. But, I mean, that, that's everything. Everything's out. So that is map number one. Not a bad showcase. Uh... You know, one major thing I would want to change about that is the deli is the uh, Beyond Boss spawns later. I'm going to do map number two here. And I'll dirty. It's real dirty. That's my second one this league. I got one out of a Diviner Strong box off stream too. Like a couple days ago actually. While I was still testing this stuff. <laughs> uh, such a bittersweet feeling seeing that card now. Hey! Thought that was a big sound. Oh, we got our first uh, Shikari touched here. 
And it was decent. Of course, I have zero altars. I got like literally no altars on this map. But, uh, yeah. I don't even, that was not from an abyss either. I think that was, that probably was a beyond monster. Shakari touched. He's healing like crazy. What? Oh my god. I couldn't get my stupid flash to go off. <laughs> I missed the flash timing on that. Barely. <laughs> wow. What was the mods on that? He healed like crazy when he came out. My first bit of damage. 23 divines. Hey, yeah, I got good. I got a good turnout. Only 20 exalts and 23 divines. Yeah. Ooh, hey. That's a nice way to start the first map. Love that. That's actually two, two, two of my, now four of my seven, uh, seven years bad luck were, were duped. Or, well, I'm sorry. I Basically, out of the seven, seven years bad luck I now have, two of them are free. I nailed it. Man. I only have one divination altar there, but uh, out of the abyss is pretty rare. Oh my god. What? <laughs> wow, I didn't... I had no flask charge to even... <laughs> Man, for that, I was out of nowhere. Yo, not the greatest. Not the greatest split. That was the Shikari touched. Presumably a bad split. All oh, divine, then. Well... I'm gonna get those divine orbs one way or another. So I get that and then go from there. Bro, this boss still hasn't spawned. Oh shit! What? I thought I said what? Mob was it? Wow, I got super lucky. I got 13 divines, only 7 exalted. I thought I read Tukahoma touched. I thought that was going to be maps for a second. So I didn't even say anything. I still want a league. I want next league to be... Oh, hey. What's up? 7 years bad luck. That came out of an Eldritch minion spawn. <laughs> Random spawn. That would have been a great apothecary drop. Randomly off like nothing. Not even a strong box monster. I'm still holding out for next league mechanic to be unlimited map mods. Like Templar gloves. Keep battling it over and over and over. Until it bri until it like bricks or you have a mob map with like 20 mods on it and then you run it And then a currency god touch drops like a hundred divine orbs And you get like three apothecaries in one map What do you guys think? <laughs> but the map would also like be almost impossible to do. Even without magic fine character. Actually it wouldn't be that hard, honestly. I don't think. I don't know, maybe. I wonder. I wonder, like, I'm really curious how hard a map would be if it had every single modifier. Can you imagine? How hard would it be? How many, how many modifiers are there, actually? There's like, there's something like 80 modifiers, I think. Imagine not 8 mod map, but 80 mod map. I want to see that. Oh, hey. That's interesting. 14 exalts! 4 divines! Un 
unlucky. Unlucky. First of all, that guy shouldn't even be alive Can anymore. Anyway, whatever. I'm actually slightly concerned with surviving. God, I got both deli bosses over here. guy's insane. That particular dub. Fuck, dude. I only got three portals left. This is bad. I have hit a lot of altars. Fuck, I got Rog up here, which is kind of bad. Mm, okay. I'm genuinely concerned... Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, I was about to head back this way anyway, so I think I can... Thank God I got through that red beast. Which made me trigger the legion. Okay, I got past that guy. That's good. Double dragon hard as I died! No! No, in the Legion spawn! Why would it kill me like that? That fast? It's so rude. No, I'm not gonna get it. I think there's like a 20% chance I get through this. God, fuck <laughs> this guy. Fuck that guy. Oh, I can't. Oh my god. I had. So, I had. That's the best map I had for divination potential. That was the best map. Path carry is no, I don't know, that's super rare. Pretty rare. You gotta do enough maps before you earn one. I said in the beginning of this, I think I should see two separate apothecary drops in 100 maps on average with this setup. I know another guy has farmed like dozens of apothecaries this league and he's getting one every 70 to 80 maps with like gilded scarab setups and uh, similar strat, but with basically similar strat, but with gilded scarabs not winged and so I would expect to see him maybe one in every 50 maps okay New record! New record smashed! I smash record in whole numbers only. Only in whole numbers. Divisible... Di divisible by 10. <laughs> That's almost an apothecary. It's over. Twenty-one percent chance to duplicate divination cards. It can happen. It can happen, folks. Yes, it's possible. God damn! What? Ah! <laughs> Come on! Come on! <laughs> oh, that would have been so amazing! This is one map after 40 Divines! One map after... God! 
Argh! I know, I'm like so mad that only one drop. Because I had it, it was all I'm in mean, master plan. Streamer, RNG, on tilt, everything. Like, you know, completely broke the casino slot machine in my favor. Everything was riding high and it didn't, it didn't dupe. God. Not for sure. Oh, I had that. Yeah, this has been some 10 minutes, yeah. First time here, it's been some 10 minutes. I bet. I'm gonna have 300 viewers here in the next five minutes. We'll keep going. <laughs> Every time you talk about I'm recurrent. The innocent dupes. Of course, of course, the innocent dupes. Yeah. Oh, well, that just happened. But on next, but that was on next. Hey, eleven divine. How many exalts was it? Oh man, I got lucky. Seven exalts. And an intuitive leap on the backside. Whoa, the Illuminati strikes again. Yeah. That's when I stood up earlier. I didn't actually go blow my nose. I, I, I quickly texted my Illuminati GGG friends. And I said, hey, um, I could really use another currency god touch. Here. Would you mind? You know, just kind of sliding that into my next map. That'd be great. I'm like, yeah, sure, we got you. No problem. I told them to give me an apothecary as well, so we'll see if it drops in this next map too. It's supposed to. Wow! In the same area. On the same platform. <laughs> Off the same abyss. Actually, no, the uh, the unnatural instinct came... It was sitting there beforehand from the strong box. Yeah, I'm actually disappointed in you guys. I didn't say anything when I picked up... Scrolled over the unnatural instinct because I was waiting for somebody to say something, but literally nobody saw it. <laughs> You all, you all failed me. Just <laughs> a natural instinct and apothecary in the same map. <laughs> Come on. Jesus Christ. Uh, well, um, better late than never for the for the streamer Illuminati to pull their strings and give me my items. We asked for them earlier, but you know. The supply chain crisis, I guess. Couldn't quite get it delivered on time. Yeah, there's just something about this drop. It just doesn't quite hit the same, you know, right after that moment. I, 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 okay, I guess. Divine Orb, yeah. Sure. I mean, it is, it is on my loot filter. I guess I'll go ahead and pick it up.
You're always excited to see a divine orb. I mean, I normally am. Unless it came right after an unnatural instinct and apothecary drop. Then it's not so exciting. Now, if this was a headhunter right here, then, you know, we, we'd be talking. We'd be talking more dopamine. But I already overdosed on dopamine the other day, so... <sighs> yeah, clearly, I'm on the... Uh, it's not copium, it's not hopium, hopium, it's actual dopamine. Can I not have but a moment's respite? Oh, I, I got my friends. I, I got the, I got the the devs on speed dial. So I just, I just text them and say, hey, just so you know, uh, I got a lot of people watching my stream and it's not been interesting for the last, you know, 20 minutes or so. I would really appreciate it if you, you know, make something happen. And then they reply, they say, okay, what map are you farming? And I say, oh, Defile Cathedral. And they're like, oh, okay, got it. So you want an apothecary? I say, yeah, the apothecary drop. Of course. And they're like, on it. And I don't know, maybe he was on the toilet at the time. He couldn't quite get to it when I texted him earlier, like, you know, 20 minutes ago. But anyway, there it is. I guess the unnatural instinct was, um, you know, the late fee. The disgusting amount of currency you're getting. You know I lose currency on, on most maps, right? All right, all right, all right. It's time for the results on this crazy 250 Divine Orb investment across 100 maps strategy combining Strongbox Enraged, primarily for the Apothecary card chance, as well as All In Abyss, High Investment Abyss, primarily for... Uh, God Touch Currency, uh, with a little bit of crossover potential, obviously there. Uh, the Atlas Tree was, will ha be in the description below. My POB, the Discord, for sharing information if you want to try this strategy. Uh, there are some other people in my community that are trying this out with better luck than me, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> anyway, we got dump tabs A, B, and C in here. Uh, I will not be counting emblems, legion emblem, because I didn't farm legion. Uh, I won't be counting logbooks, for which there are a few. A few logbooks. Not many, to be honest. Uh, there's, of course, some repositories and uh, tunnels, blueprints, not counted. Uh, beasts were on every map, but you know, I was using the INR Master Mission for those, so I'm not going to count those either because, uh, you know, it's a little bit unfair. I'm already getting the Master Mission f for free as a bonus anyway. Um, by the way, there was no, I don't think there was a single major drop from a beast. That I, I might have got like a seven years bad luck off a beast or something, maybe. But uh, nothing super substantial. Uh, of course, there's just tons of stuff in here. A lot of uniques. Uh, a lot of maps. Not very many stacked decks, though. <laughs> for the gambling portion later. Uh, of course, we are going to have to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 gems. And uh, this is going to be 12 plus 6 because the Awakened Multi-Strike supports take twice as long. And they're a little bit more valuable fully leveled. So we're going to add 18 Divine Orbs on top of the total findings. Uh, but nothing else added. No other, you know, extra calculations to be made. It is time for me to bring you down here. So there it is. 249... Divine Orbs, as it was on the first day. Let's take a snapshot here, just verify what we're looking at. Uh, almost a mirror <laughs> worth of currency in these in these dump tabs right now. 452. 452.66 plus uh, 18 for the level gems. Puts me at a gross of 
0.66 now let's go ahead and double check that everything looks good uh, as you can see there were two apothecaries found there in the highlights uh, a lot of seven years bad luck so i think i got lucky with these there were actually like three or four dupes involved with the seven years bad luck uh 17 dragon hearts actually seems a little high too 389 innocence so my ratio was roughly two apothecaries per two or one apothecary per 200 the innocence and one thing i would really like to find out from the community at large here for any of you who might be listening who has farmed defile cathedral extensively i'm talking like dozens of apothecaries this league uh, please let me know your ratio of the innocent uh, to apothecary rate i'm very very curious about that I, I don't because that's much easier to determine the you know average drop rate of rather than comparing it to seven years bad luck and the enlightens uh, like we have had to in the past uh, like criminals here that uh, looks like it has about half the drop rate only 18 the enlightened so it looks like i actually got kind of lucky between the seven years bad luck and the enlightens uh i don't think i got lucky with the apothecaries i expected two uh, i would think maybe even more than two uh potentially i was expecting two maybe three uh for the level of juice the amount of monsters i killed i mean must have killed like two <laughs> well over a million monsters in this uh 100 maps session i would say i, I should have probably checked before <laughs> just to see but uh yeah, that's the divination tab. We got 150 raw divine orbs. Of course, we had a magnificent 40 divine orb uh, record-breaking explosion in there. But uh, actually, I did point out here, it looks like I only received 8 currency god-touched. Uh, so that's an average of about 1 per every 12 maps. So, you know, I can get basically double that. If I do a high investment strategy, I will see twice as I will see them twice as often, like once every six maps. Uh, if I'm pure target farming currency, God touch. Uh, but it's obvious that strong box is very poor. I think, I think one. Yeah, I know one, maybe two, of these currency God touch came from strong box. Most of them were from the abyss, as expected. And the average was 14.7 divines per. Seems about right. Maybe a little bit lucky. Uh, as you can see, you know, they went in the order as follows. 9, 23, 3, 13, 4, 40, and 11. I said I got 8 currency god touched. I'm counting an, uh, an innocence touched in there. Uh, I did have an innocence touched in there. It wasn't amazing. It was like 11. Uh, or, or, yeah, maybe only 11 winged scarabs. It's actually a little bit lackluster. Bad split, I think. Uh, but I do count innocence as a premium god touched anyway. So, we also have a unnatural instinct that was in there. Now, here's an interesting thing I discovered. Uh, I had some really, really, really awful luck uh, with uh, uniques. Not counting the one unnatural instinct, so this kind of saved me from having just absolute terrible RNG. Um, anyway... Yeah, so after that, I mean, there's like this six-linked random chest, and then there's like three intuitive leaps, and it's just all downhill from there. Uh, nothing else of any real significance. This is a winged reliquary, like max juice strategy. I expected to see much better unique side. I absolutely expected to see at least one Aegis Aurora prototype, you know, just like we did last time, basically. So quite surprised. I think part of that is... Again, Legion, even better than people realize with the Legion chests and, and the Legion generals. They do drop a ton of uniques, I guess. Um, uniques don't drop that much from the white monsters out of strong boxes. They're much better at dropping divination cards, not so much uniques. Uh, so it would seem. Uh, but yeah, really disappointing there. Let's go ahead and just kind of scroll through here. I got uh, five Tainted Chaos, a ton of Tainted Fusings. I did a really good job, I think, uh, in this farm, trying to mm, abuse the beyond mechanics so that uh, it would s stay longer. And I explained that in the opening map, how I was clearing the maps uh, deliberately to keep beyond the b beyond boss from spawning and therefore ruining the rest of the map with no beyond. It seemed honestly seemed to work pretty well. I'm not I'm still not 100% sure how it works. I'm wondering. Maybe uh, you guys can fill me in. Has anyone tested this? If Beyond 
A certain monster spawns in a map, and then that mo that is like the designated monster. When it dies, it spawns uh, the um, Beyond Blast. I'm beginning to think that might be how it works, because I sure did seem uh, to get a lot out of clearing a portion of the map, leaving the Beyond Monsters up, and skipping them. And then even if, like, later on I was clearing a ton of Beyond minions, it wouldn't spawn the boss. It would, it, so that's why I'm getting this idea that maybe uh, the Beyond, the mechanic, the way it works is, you know, you can spawn the boss very early. Uh, but it, if you're just going around clearing everything, clearing the Beyond as it spawns, you're likely to spawn the boss super early on a strategy like this. Uh, but it would seem that if you are being delicate in your clear and clearing the monsters but leaving the beyond up skipping the rest you know using phasing and everything i made it last a really long time and i saw a whole bunch of whole bunch of extra loot on account of that again beyond doesn't just drop tainted currencies they drop divination cards they drop uh currency touch uh, maybe one of the currency touch was a beyond monster i'm not exactly sure but anyway here is the rest of the stuff here that's everything there. So let's go ahead and I'll just verify one more time that everything looks right. There was an issue with the, the calculations or the v pricing values here. Everything looks about right now. I, I noticed the divine orbs up just a hair. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to take 470 minus 249. 0.19. And my net profit was 221. So, with this strategy, it took longer than most because the way I was clearing the maps was very particular and I was doing like the Defile Cathedral circuit, if you will, uh, running it around three full times, three full laps, uh, again, explained in the first video. And it took me about 13 and a half hours to do all of this. Yeah, 13 and a half hours. So, uh, we can see that comes out to about... Sixteen. A little over sixteen divines an hour. Now, that sounds about right to me, you know, finding two apothecaries. This is but this is less currency prior than I normally get doing you know, less juice, no target farming divination cards. It's kinda strange. I feel like speed farming divination cards or speed farming uh god touch rares will actually both of those will actually let net me more currency per hour than this did which is kind of peculiar but i i think this is a result of just the investment cost being so high 2.5 divines per map i mean that is so much more so much more than i usually put in but hey you know people want to know the answer can you juice up a map kind of like the way we did ha used to in the old days this was maximum juice can't really do much more i mean i could do 100 percent deli obviously but uh, beyond that, I mean, this was... I was investing like 50 chaos per map by forcing 20% uh, deli 8 mod corrupted maps into play here. Uh, so that was a lot of added investment, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Not too bad. I was curious what it would make. I honestly felt like this, this had the potential uh, to lose me money. So... You know, if I had not gotten either Apothecary, I would be looking around, you know, 81 point. I mean, I would have made about six Divines an hour without either Apothecary. And that's still with all the God Touch loot. So, you know, it, if somehow I don't get any of the stuff that I'm target farming, I, I guess I'm negative. But, I mean, that would be kind of ridiculous to uh, suggest that I do 100 maps target farming, two separate specific things, and basically not get either one of them. Uh, at all. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. Um, would be a ridiculous argument anyway. So I would expect to get, you know, generally speaking, I, I would probably, I would almost never get less than 10 divines an hour doing this, I feel like. And it would probably average to around 15 to 20 divines an hour, I, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, somewhere the, the variance is definitely there. Definitely uh, kind of a high variance. And the strategy was intended uh, to be variable. It's just a fun little project uh, this is definitely not one of those strategies that i'm trying to do as a as a strategy to 
suggest to you guys that, that you guys should definitely you know should get on board with this strategy it's it's not that kind of strategy it was more of an eye-opening experience uh now there's two very lucrative separate ways to farm there's traditional way with the strong box farming uh for me anyway and then there is the new god touch farming i wanted to see if i could combine them you can be combined but they're not really they, they kind of uh they just don't really sync up really well uh for one thing i'm not doing legion so yeah, the, the map layout actually is kind of the biggest problem. So I imagine if, uh, I don't know, imagine if Jungle Valley dropped the same divination cards as Defiled Cathedral. <laughs> we might have a different uh, situation on our hands, but yeah, this map layout, I don't like it. Uh, Crimson Temple is not so good for it either. And that's the story. So that is the results there. We got still got the gambling portion to do, and it is going to be an exciting one. I got, what do I got? Three? Three Enlightened Supports. Two empower supports and the rest enhance and then some multi-strikes. So that's a lot of stakes going on here. I got a Calandra's Touch I need to buy, but I'm going to need to hit at least a couple of these in order to have the currency to buy it. So I want to get it. Wish me luck. Here it is. The gambling results. Uh, to, to be fair, I only had 35 stack decks. So... <laughs> uh, but... As you all know, where it really counts, the gems. Had a nice run of it in the middle. I was well ahead there in the middle with uh, three up Awaken Enhanced Supports. Even a double up Awaken Multi-Strike Support. That's pretty dang rare to hit this. Uh, could be worth a huge amount uh, if, if it's like the only one on the market. However, I did buy five exceptional Empower and or Enlightened. None of them went up. That basically means I lost money. Uh, and then also, whereas I saved the large ring thread of hope, I did have a massive ring thread of hope in there, which is like 30 or 40 or 50 divines. Uh, it was minus 10, max all res, so it was perfectly rolled. And it poofed, so yeah, gone. As far as Sedima's touches, I don't know, somebody said this. these are potentially AG gloves, kind of memeing here, AG, uh... AG Magic Fine Gloves. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Basically, we're just trying to get Elemental Weakness on hit there. Yeah. So, four down, four up, seven the same. So, actually, this spread, the spread itself is slightly favorable because a perfectly well balanced spread would have had four the same, four down, and eight. Or sorry, eight the same, four down, four up. Uh, but the issue here is that the high high stakes gems, none of them went up. So that's why I lost money. If I, if I just have one of these, like if I just substitute one of these in here, I make a lot of currency on that, actually. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, not going to be a Calandra's touch <laughs> immediately anyway. But... 90 divines sitting there and uh, 150 divines... Raw Divine sitting in these dump tabs. So, yeah. Got a little bit of a start on it, I guess. I just have to do more farming, I guess. To uh, get that Calandra's Touch. I'm just happy it's not four or five mirrors anymore. <laughs> Alright, so uh, final thoughts. I actually kind of already gave my final thoughts accidentally again uh, in the results portion. Um, you know, the point I really want to hit home is... This was crazy high stakes, high investment uh, farming strategy. Not even talking the gambling portion. I'm talking the actual farming strategy. A lot of people ask in the stream, how do, how do I even get started on this? And I, I think that would be probably the most valuable information I can give you there. So I've been telling people, first of all, you don't have to run Tornado Shot. You don't even have to have a headhunter to get started on uh, God Touch Farming, Magic Finding, if you want. Um, you can take whatever build you like to do, as long as it's some way, uh, some halfway decent mapping build. Throw a Gloom Shrine on it. Uh, sub out your boots for wor gold worms. They don't even have to be perfectly rolled or anything. Sub out one ring for Ventor's Gamble. Sub out one flask for a gold flask like this. I mean, you're well on your way, you know, with 20 to 30% quant and nearly 200% rarity, you know, beyond that. I mean, you can look at getting a helmet with a whole bunch of rarity. 
you got Sedima's Touch Gloves if you want. You got the Divination Distillate, which does require a Petrified Blood, which turn you know changes your build a little bit. Uh, but definitely, you know, one ring, the boots, and a gold flask isn't going to kill anybody's build. That absolutely works, you know. And then you have to throw a Reliquary Scarab on. At least polished, I'd say. Uh, polished or gilded is fine. And go farm legions in Jungle Valley with a Gloom Shrine. It's a ton of fun. And you're going to find, you know, more than just zero to one Divine Orbs. <laughs> you're going to find, like... I mean, sometimes you'll find only one or two. Uh, sometimes you'll find, like, 12 <laughs> if you do that. Though, um, I've heard enough testaments from my community, uh, from people with a wide vari variety of different starting points, gearing threshold strategies. I can confidently say uh, even just those three items and a polished reliquary scare, do the strategy right, uh, the Jungle Valley strategy. My suggestion is the speed juicing jungle valley strategy i made a whole video on it um yeah you'll be good with that so if you want to do the strategy i did here yeah it's fine uh it's, it's cool it definitely was challenging and still fairly rewarding but had the op it had the potential to like not really make any currency at all uh so in that sense i guess it has the potential to make crazy currency you know if i had gotten like Let's say I got four apothecaries. Well, I would have made like 35 divines an hour or something like that. Uh, if I had found like four apothecaries. But anyway, that's it for this video. I have one more major 100 maps farming session I want to do. Uh, yes, I know that Mayhem and Endless Delve and Delirium Everywhere is coming out. I only intend to do Delirium Everywhere. And I will be kind of quasi testing my league start strategy for next league uh doing that uh so i am going to continue farming a bit on live on the league and i'm going to do 100 maps either 80 or 100 percent at least 80 percent delirious skittering orb jungle valley no wandering path Gonna be taking Conquered Conquerors and um, either Shaping of the Valleys or Plus One Legion. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. Plus One Legion might actually be better. Anyway, that is what is coming up on the next major video. That's gonna be a pretty crazy one. Uh, probably going to actually top what I did here. Especially if I can pull off 100% Delirious. I don't know if I can pull up, off 100% Delirious with... A bunch of magic fine gear i may look at potentially dropping back down to omniscient setup just to do it uh maybe definitely going to drop the rarity support either way i'm going to drop that but that is what's coming up next so hope you enjoyed the highlights hope you enjoyed the video hope it, hopefully it was insightful at least and another big question people have is whether or not i'm going to do ruthless mode next league I haven't decided yet uh, it looks like my community is kind of leaning against it pretty heavily. I, this is one of those things where I might actually let my own community sort of dictate how I do. Because I'm very much kind of on the fence about it. With its current information that's out on it. It looks like it's going to be pretty rough. Uh, and, and if very few people are genuinely interested in it, then maybe I won't. Either way, I'm going to have fun next league for sure. But we still got a few things left to do this league. That's it. I'm out for this video. And catch you in the next one.